What about you? Today I'm going to show you a beginner's guide on how to scarify your lawn. Everything you need from start to finish. We're going to talk about the tools that you need, how to identify thatch and moss. And I'm going to show you three different ways to kill the moss in your lawn. Let's go. So now we've started into it and we're cutting the grass. I get a lot of questions about whether or not you should cut the grass and what height you should cut it at. Now, depending on what you're trying to achieve, if you're thinking about overseeding your lawn, then it might be helpful scalping the grass away down. Alternatively, if your grass is really long, then you're probably going to want to cut it very short because it's going to make it a lot easier to get into with the scarifier. But something that I would say is if you really sculpt your grass down and you're just scarfan, then it's going to take a lot longer for the grass to recover. So there's swings and roundabouts to what you do and there's no right and wrong, it just depends on your own garden. To explain to you why with Scarfy, I've pulled this core out of the lawn. You can see there's quite a bit of moss on the top of it there. And whenever we look at the side profile of it, you can see that up the top we have our moss and our grass and then this lighter brown layer is known as thatch and then we have our soil. Whenever you have a lot of thatch in your lawn, then it starts to become an issue. It blocks air, water and light from getting down into the roots. The best way and really the only way to get it out is to scarify it. So scarifying is just taking a tool and ripping that out and it just pulls it all out. We've got the grass cut. Our next step is now to scarify the lawn. I've got a couple of manual tools here that you can do to scarify your lawn. I'm just going to show you. This is our first tool. We'll have the manual scarifier. You can see these blades on it. They're shaped to so take the stuff out. You see the moss and the thatch that's been pulled out in that very short space of time. So this method works well. These blades pull out a lot out, but it's hard work. If you don't have that scarf and rig that I just showed you, you might have one of these here in your shed. Now these are an old fashioned type of rake, a bulldog metal rake, and the teeth on it are really good. That springtime rake, really good for ripping out the moss. We'll have a go with this now. To show you quickly, so with the springback rake, we only took out a small amount. Whenever we go up to here, and with this tool, you can see all the extra material we took out. We took out nearly triple the amount with this tool, as opposed to this one. Tools like this here are perfect for smaller spaces, 50, 100 square meters. Any more than 100 square meters, you're probably not gonna to wanna to use something like this. You're gonna be looking at an electric scar fire. There's a lot of different electric scar fires you can buy in around 100 to 200 pounds. But if you have a, 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 a bigger lawn, then you're probably gonna use a tool like this here. This is actually a professional scar fire. Now, you could, hire one of these for the day. They are quite expensive to buy. So the best option is probably to hire it. You could hire in the blower as well. It's going to make tidying up a lot easier. So let's get on with the scarf fan now. What height do you set the scarf fire at? You just want the blades to tickle the surface. You don't want the blades to go into the soil and you want them to go into the grass. You're better to set the scarf fire to a high height and bring it down slowly and just test it out yourself. You can always run over it again. What you don't want to do is you don't want to put holes in your lawn. So if this is your first time scarf fan, just set the scarf fire to high height, do a couple of passes and then put it down. And over time, you'll get the experience behind what you need to be taken out and not, but you're better taking out less. And that way the lawn's going to recover faster than putting a lot of holes into your lawn and perhaps damaging your equipment too.
So you see there, we're taking a wee bit out, but not very much, so I'm going to put it down another bit and have another go. There you go, we've done one pass. Now, if you had an electric scarf fire, chances are you would want to rake all this up before you went over it again. As that is a petrol powered scarf fire and it's very powerful, I'm just going to put it down a bit in height and I'm going to go over it again and do it a second time. Let's do that now. Now you've got the lawn single scarf fire, now we're going to do it double. To explain what I mean, we we'll go one direction then we we'll go the other. So if you, if you bring your lines, your second line, in line with that one, you're going to take out the least amount. Whenever you start going across your cut, so if you're going perpendicular, you're going to take the most out. The closer you bring those lines together, the less, less harsh you are in the turf. So that's the hardest. And going straight up and down along the same lines, that's the least amount you're going to take out. But whenever you bring those lines together, then you start to be harder on your turf. I have the lawn all scarfied. I'm going to show you a couple of tools to clean up. The bulldog rake that we use to do the scarfing, you can use one of these here, but it can be slow going. Something that's a lot better is these rakes here. You'll see these rakes a lot in my videos. Now, I'm going to show you a wee secret behind how to use them without hurting your back. You can use these here all day long, really, really easy. Now, if you want to support the channel, I'm going to leave a link down below. You can pick one of these rakes up at no extra cost yourself. So let's start with the raking. So the secret to using these rakes is to keep your back straight and keep this upright. A lot of people would lean down in and put that in and it's a lot harder to push along or pull along. So if you keep your, if you keep your back straight, this actually flicks the grass up. Now we've got all this lifted. We're going to go up into the workshop and have a chat about the best way to kill moss in your lawn. I'm going to show you three different ways. Let's go now. In the UK, there's nothing that you can put on your lawn that kills moss. How we kill moss in a lawn is we put iron on it and iron dehydrates it. And I'm going to show you that shortly. So if you're using an electric scarfire or if you're using a manual rake, you might want to put the iron on beforehand and it sits in the surface and it's going to burn the surface. However, if you watch a lot of my videos, whenever we're doing the scarf fan, we put the iron on afterwards. And why that is, because with the professional tools, we're clearing, we're clearing that moss out of the lawn. And if you think of the grass plant sitting up, and the iron can get right down into the base because the iron doesn't kill it, it just dries it out and dehydrates it. If you have a lot, of this material here, if you have a big deep bed of thatch and you're putting the moss controller on the top, well then you're just going to burn it. Now the downside to doing it afterwards is you can't seed the lawn at the same time. If you want to seed your lawn, you have to leave a space in between putting the iron on and then doing your seeding. Show you the three products to kill moss in your lawn. The first product we'll have is the liquid iron. Really good if you have a small space. Measure out what you need and spray it on. The downside to the liquid iron is, it's more expensive. If you want a cheaper option or if you have a bigger garden, then something that you can't go wrong to, it's soluble iron. You mix this up in some water and then you spray it on. But the key thing, the soluble iron, is you need a set of scales. You need to weigh out exactly what you need. Third method to kill moss on your lawn, and it's something really good, especially if you're just starting out, is lawn sand. If you want to learn all about lawn sand, watch this video next, and I'll see you over there now.